and welcome to She Walks, She Paints. Thank you for joining me again on this episode. If you have been liking, commenting or subscribing on my other videos, thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate it. If you are new here, my name is Sarah and this is Jack Spaniels. And normally we'd be going out on a walk to show you a part of the beautiful Scottish country and looking for things to photograph and paint when I get home. But today is slightly different. Jack's not actually going to come with us because we're going to do an episode of She Paddles, She Paints. <laughs> We're gonna take the kayak out. We're gonna go see an island in the middle of the fourth. Jack does come in the kayak and he does really like it, but it's a bit far for him today. And also there might be seals around. Jack and seals, not a great mix. So we thought it best that he goes to his grandma and granddad's. Yeah? You wanna go see grandma and granddad? And we're gonna take the kayak out and show you around this island. So he's not gonna feature a huge amount in today's video, but he's gonna have a great time. And hopefully we will too. So the next time I see you, we'll probably be putting a life jacket on and getting into the kayak. Let's head out and see what we can find today. We're at Abadawa, which is one of the places I visited in a previous video. We did the coastal walk along to Abadawa to have a look at the castle. We're back at the beach, but we've got the kayak with us. So we're gonna head on out. See, it's absolutely flat calm and it's supposed to stay that way for the rest of the day due to the forecast. So yeah, it's a perfect day to go across to one of the islands in the fourth. And um, this is Willie's third time going. So he's my tour guide and it's my first time going over to this particular island. So I'm really excited. So yeah, let's head off. See you on the water. We are heading for Inchcombe Island, one of the many small islands in the Firth of Forth. It's about a quarter of a mile away from the shore of Fife, across this section of water known as Mortimer's Deep. Supposedly, the body of Sir Alan Mortimer was being transported to the island for burial in the Middle Ages. However, for unknown reasons, his coffin was dropped into the sea instead. Around six miles away on the far side of the water, you can just make out the city of Edinburgh with its castle and the famous hill Arthur's Seat silhouetted on the horizon. Set in its strategically important position in the middle of the Firth of Forth, Inchcombe Island has a long and fascinating history. Its occupation goes back as far as the Romans, who may have used this island as a base for their incursions into Scotland. Oh, 
Okay, so we've arrived safely on the island and now we're gonna get out of our wetsuits and have an explore. See you in a sec. Inchcombe means Combe's Isle, or the island of Columba. Although there is no proven link to St Columba, the island is home to Inchcombe Abbey, Scotland's best preserved group of monastic buildings. In 1123, King Alexander I sheltered on the island during a storm, and he resolved to establish a monastery there to give thanks for his life being saved. The Augustinian monks that settled here made the most of the island's peace and quiet to aid their studies and contemplation of their faith. However, Inchcombe's seclusion also made it a target for less peaceful activities. English ships attacked the island many times during the wars of Scottish independence, which often forced the monks to abandon the abbey for periods of time. Although it doesn't look it today, the abbey would once have been filled with important relics, as well as gold and silver. This tempted English ships across the water to raid the island for its riches. During one such raid in 1355, the English stormed the island and stole all the abbey's treasure, including a statue of the venerated Saint Columba. Before the English intruders could return home with their booty, a storm almost wrecked the ship, and the sailors, fearing the wrath of God, returned the statue to the monks, although they still managed to sail home with the remaining treasure. Stone eaten away by the sea.
buildings here date between the 12th and 16th centuries, with the Protestant Reformation of 1560 bringing an end to monastic life on the island. The buildings are so well preserved due to their island location, which made it more difficult for reformers to completely destroy the abbey. It was a lovely surprise to find these fuchsia flowers on the island. Even though it is autumn time now, these brightly coloured flowers are still going strong. I know they aren't naturally occurring. These were probably planted by the historic Scotland stewards who used to live here so they could watch over the site. Even after the Abbey's demise, the island's involvement in conflict continued. In 1795, during the Napoleonic Wars, a gun battery was installed when the French threatened to invade. Inchcombe was then heavily fortified in the early 1900s to help defend the city of Edinburgh, a nearby naval base and the Fourth Bridge during the two world wars. The remains of these World War I and II fortifications are still here to explore.
The contrast between these austere wartime structures and the beautifully designed medieval architecture of the Abbey is stark, testament to the two very different sides of this island's history. I can only imagine what it must have been like to be stationed here, watching out to sea for enemy vessels. I love finding the beauty hidden among these decaying buildings, like the colour and texture of the rust contrasting with the teal paintwork of this door. I think my favourite part of visiting Inchcombe was actually discovering another smaller island just off the shore, officially named Swallow Craig. This tiny island has been given a different popular nickname due to an ever-increasing colony of garden gnomes that have made this island their home. appearing in 2010, it is a mystery as to how the gnomes have ended up here. Did they get here by themselves, or did they have help from one of the many watercraft that go between the mainland and the islands? Several attempts have been made to evict the gnomes from their home here, but they always reappear, and they have now been accepted as permanent residents. So there you go, we've had a really good explore of the Abbey here on Inchcombe and also all those World War One and Two gun batteries and buildings that are on the other part of the island. Such a long and fascinating history. Imagine if the rocks on this island could talk and tell us all the stories that they've seen. It's been lovely here today, it's really peaceful. It's also a little bit creepy because we're walking around these ruins and the seals, the noises that the seals are making are very creepy and mournful. You can imagine staying here overnight when it was a lonely monastery and there was whales coming across the water to you. Very, very strange sounding. So, yep. You can understand why they inspired a lot of folk tales about selkies and mermaids and people being lured into the sea. <laughs> it's been another strange one today without Jack. We always miss him when he's not here, but it's probably for the best because, yep, there's loads of seals. They might start serenading me again. <laughs> 
um, and there's also lots of gulls and birds that nest here as well so probably for the best he wasn't there it does make the kayaking a little bit more stressful when Jack's in the boat but he does really enjoy it so I'm, I'm sure we'll get out on another she walks she paddles special at some point before too long and Jack will join us on that as well but yeah it's been a great day it's been really peaceful it's such a privilege sort of having this island to ourselves today it's usually open to the public with boat trips but they're not running the boats today so it's purely been for us kayakers I hope you enjoyed looking around with me and looking for stuff to photograph and paint as well I've got a few photographs to look at so I'm still undecided but I will see you back in the studio to start painting to dry land back from our big voyage across the water to the island that was so much fun the kayaking was lovely conditions were amazing and the island was so cool it was so much to explore and just having it to ourselves was so much fun as well so yep i hope you really enjoyed it and now it's time to head back and get back into the studio Fuchsias have been my favourite flower since I was a child, probably because of the flower fairy illustrations by Cicely Barker, and I've wanted to paint one for a long time. I start my paintings with a pale wash of colour. This allows me to block out the shapes so I can raise the pencil lines before carrying on. If there are any patches of white, such as a shiny reflection, I make sure to leave these parts unpainted. I found it really hard to match the vibrant pink of the outer petals. The sunlight was shining through them, which means that there isn't a flat, single colour to focus on. I tried to capture this effect by going over the pink with a peachy yellow wash to emulate the glow of the light coming through. The fuchsia plant actually comes from South America originally, and it was first brought to Britain in 1788. There are now over 100 known varieties. Because it is not a native plant, there is not much folklore surrounding the fuchsia in Britain. We know it was a popular plant with the Incas of Bolivia and Peru. It can even be found growing on the paths up to Machu Picchu. It is strange to think of this ornamental flower that we normally associate with manicured gardens, growing wild in such faraway places.
For the dark purple petals, I start with the darkest colour and blend it out. Then I add in a wash of more vibrant purple to bring out the intensity of the colour. Fuchsia flowers are also known as ladies' eardrops because of their resemblance to jewellery. They are also thought of as dancers because the splayed out petals look like a ballerina's tutu. I think the image I have chosen reflects this, which is why I was drawn to paint it. I'm nearly finished now, but I feel like the pink petals need a bit more definition. They aren't actually that dark in the photo, as the light is shining through them, but it doesn't translate to the painting in the same way, so I'm going to add some darker shadows to bring the piece together. All my paintings are available as prints on my Etsy store. Purchasing a print means that you're helping to support my channel and genuinely helps me keep doing what I love and sharing that with you. You can also support me by liking, commenting or subscribing, following me on Instagram or by donating the cost of a coffee over on Ko-fi. Links to all my pages are in the video description below. He's excited. I think that's a train. Yeah, that's a train. There's always something interrupting me. And as usual, I have my paddle the wrong way around. Is this when you accidentally splash me with a huge puddle full of water? No. No, don't! I'm held prisoner by the gnomes. Oh. Pigeon. Why did it stink? Sound a nettle. Wait, 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 wait. What? We've forgotten something. Oh, Where's this puppy dog? <gasps> there he is! That's my seat! Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, oh, did you have a nice time, Jack? Lots of treats for Jack, huh?